everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to another live class. This is one of our juniors classes, our uh, kids class so it's gonna be a little bit simpler it's a little bit of a shorter class um, all ages are welcome so these are also great for um, beginner classes too um, beginners are welcome too um, or even if you're advanced and you just want to get something in your sketchbook and just paint a little bit um, that's kind of what this class is about. Um, so I'm really excited to be doing this cute little adorable puppy. Um, I'm gonna go over some supplies real quick and then we will get going. I do already have my traceable out here, but I am gonna be going over some basic shapes just in case you don't wanna use the traceable. Um, I will have that available. So I'm gonna post the traceable in the comment section right now. And before class, before we start, I will be going over basic shapes, okay? So for the supplies, this is just my eight and a half by five and a half sketchbook. I have it on my Amazon uh, shop. It's really helpful for getting in sketches. I also use this for watercolor, super helpful, um, great for practice, highly recommend it. It also comes in like a three pack, so you can use, I have like one for watercolor, one for, acrylics and then my other one is just kind of for crafty stuff um so yeah that's pretty great too so i have that you can use whatever you want though so if you have a canvas that you want to use that's fine in my patreon for my traceable i have a traceable image for this size and then i also have it for it eight by ten if you're using a smaller canvas a nine by twelve as well as a and 11 by 14 so I have all four of those sizes in my patreon if you wanted to use a traceable I have that size and if you are using a size that is not listed uh, and you would like a traceable for that in your patron just message me or comment on the traceable post and I will create whatever size you want it doesn't take that long um, super simple easy process okay um, so that's like kind of like my canvas for my brushes I'm gonna be using just an array of brushes um, but like my my typical go-to brushes um, I'm gonna be using mostly the ones from grabby they sent me a kit um, so I'm gonna be using mostly those um, let me just grab them they were off to the side here um, which I will be doing I keep saying I'm gonna do a review video I will get that one out <laughs> it's in the process right now um, but for the most part, I love them. They're better quality than the ones that I was using before, which is just an Amazon kit, um, which was great for like beginners, I would say. Um, but these are, these are great. So I have my, um, my filbert, my small filbert. I am going to be using a flat brush. I don't think I'm going to be using because of the size of my canvas. Um, I had, I had put on the list a large filbert or large flat brush. That all depends on what size canvas you're using. So if you're using a larger canvas, go for it, get your large flat brush out. Um, but for this one specifically, I'm gonna be using a smaller, like medium size flat brush. And we're gonna do some fun kind of background things. Um, I don't, honestly, I don't even think I need 
the tape on this because I think I'm going to go a little bit more textured for the background. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, and then I have two round brushes, a small round brush and a medium sized round brush. That's the basis for what we're going to be doing. Um, if you want to get detailed with the fur, you could use like a like a liner brush or something like that if you wanted to. I'm going to keep it over off to the side in case I need it, but um, I don't I don't think we're going to get too detailed with this one. It's all kind of based off of your skill level and how much time you want to spend on it, okay? For the colors, we have um, we have our black we also have our white and then I'm going to be using raw umber and then I'm also going to get out um, you could either do a burnt sienna or a red I think either one of those would work I'm going to leave them both out because I'm not totally sure which one I want to um, use I think it's also like red or pink so you could if you have a pink you could do pink and you know sienna rather than um, red and then also of course the yellow so I have my I have my red out but I don't I don't think I'm gonna use it I think I'm gonna, gonna use the pink and the burnt uh, the the burnt sienna and then obviously the raw umber which is just a dark uh, a dark brown the only thing, the only other thing that was not on the supply list um, was a blue. I don't know if you can tell, but in the corner of his right eye um, is just the ever so slight touch of blue. It's reflecting something, some sort of light. Um, so if you um, if you want to add that then feel free to grab some blue. I just have my ultramarine blue. So um, yeah, those are the colors. And then you will need your paper towel, your water, your palette. I have a palette knife so that I can mix lots of paint. Um, just a little tip for that is that um, palette knives are great for mixing large quantities of paint before you even start painting because I find that if I use a brush then I get all that paint in that brush and then it's either wasted paint or you get streaks when you don't want them. So I like using a palette knife. If you don't have a palette knife, maybe you have a palette that's like has pots in it or something like that, um, then just use the smallest round brush you have and just do that and then you can rinse it out um, as needed. Let me know if anyone has any questions so far. Um, we're going to go over how to draw this little guy. Let me get an extra piece of paper with that. Alright. So here is this. I'm going to just tape it to what I have up here so it doesn't move. Um, so this is essentially how you're going to, if you don't have the traceable, and this is going to be how you're going to draw it on, okay? So essentially you're going to start with, actually I'm going to switch this. Okay. Um, you're going to start with just a basic line across it you can use a ruler if you want to um, it is a little bumpy so like theoretically you don't need to use a ruler so just you know i'm going to use this as a reference um, it's just roughly here it doesn't have to be perfect make sure that all of your lines for this drawing is um light so when you're doing uh, something like this, especially watercolors, uh, but when you're drawing on canvas and things like that, try to make it very light so like you can barely see it. Um, as you can see here, um, you can't see it that much. I didn't, I, I, I didn't press super, super hard, okay? 
Um, and that's so that when we're painting on it, you don't have to do like five different layers in order to cover up your line, okay? Um, after that, I'm going to go, I'm gonna draw a line right in the middle, okay? Right in the middle, I'm gonna draw that line. And that's gonna be his little, his little like line to mouth nose line. And then you can draw just a little circle, a little oval. And these are very sketchy lines. We we'll, we can erase a lot of this, okay? Um, after that, you're gonna go up to the top and just kind of do like a little line. I think that's gonna be the top of his head. And you can come down a little bit. I'm doing this very sketchy. I'm not pushing very hard. That's gonna be like his face. Okay, we're gonna cover some of this up, so just go with it. His nose is, like the bend in his nose is about right here. You don't have to put that line in, but I'm just showing you where it is. It'll give you a good line. It'll give you a good um, reference for where his eyes are gonna be. And you can give little circles there. Okay, and then from there, you have two little paws sticking up. And each paw is kind of touching his face, maybe a little bit into his face. So I'm just going to, it's gonna be like a half oval, maybe a little bit more than half. And this one's a little bit further tucked in. Okay. Then we have his two ears that come out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put two lines on either side two lines on either side of his paws and that's where his ear comes down and now I'm just gonna make one swooping motion from the top of his head maybe a little bit further down so not quite the top but just off to the side I'm gonna make one swooping motion that comes down to that line roughly that line and if you wanted to on this side it's about the middle you can come down a line and then start another line from there. And this line comes down pretty hard, pretty, pretty a lot, right? That, okay, actually I think it kind of comes down to his paw a little bit. So maybe this paw comes up a little bit further. You see how I can kind of adjust things as I go? It doesn't, that's why you, you shouldn't push so hard shouldn't push hard because now I can erase it and kind of twiddle it and fix it, right? Um, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. This one's kind of, you have one hump and this one's got a, a bigger, bigger hump. This one comes out a little further before coming back in. And maybe this one comes out a little bit further. And you're just going to keep keep going, keep messing with it until you have something that you like. There's that. And then the last thing you need to do is just put his little um, his little markings on. And if you have a dog like this that you want to draw, um, maybe like when he when they were a puppy. Um, you can, by all means, just copy their markings and you can draw your own dog. How fun is that? Alright, so then I'm just going to come down here. And then if you want to put in your little, your little paws, you can do that as well, okay? Just like that, don't forget his little, his little feet. Okay, so that's essentially the drawing. Um, take as much time as you need. I'm gonna wait a few minutes because I know you guys are probably a little bit behind me. Um, in his little eye circles, you can add um, the little triangles on the side that create um, the rest of the eye. And there you have it. I'm gonna go ahead and
hopefully that is helpful for anyone who did not have um, the tricycle. Okay. Um, the first thing that we are going to be painting is the background and there's like a pink pillow in the background. I'm just going to make the whole background kind of like this pinkish color. Um, so I'm going to get out my white and my pink. If you do not have a pink, you can use a red if you wanted to. Um, maybe add a tiny bit of purple to make it not so um, orange because a lot of times when you add red and white, it'll it'll be a pink, but it'll be more of like a, I don't know, it'll be like a orangey red versus like a pretty pink. So if you add a little bit of purple to that, it'll cut back on the orangey hue. Say hi if you're here. I know there's people here. I can see you. <laughs> Say hi in the comments. <laughs> Tell me where you're uh, where you're painting from and um, if you if you're painting with someone let me know who you're painting with all right I'm gonna get out my white and a little bit of pink the background's gonna be mostly white with a little bit of pink. And then um, we're also going to add that same pink to his little paws, his little, um, yeah, his little hands. Pads, I think they're called pads. Um, hi, Tanya. My first fur painting. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're not gonna go a whole lot of detailed on the fur um, because this is technically meant for a kid's class, but it'll give you a good base for fur, I feel like. Um, so I don't know. I usually get carried away in my paintings, so I might go a little bit more detailed than I intend to, but that's fine. Um, it'll be fun. Hello, crafty lady. Hello, crafty lady. Um, hello from New Hampshire. That's what NH is, right? Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mix mine. Hopefully y'all are um, ready for um, ready for paint. I'm gonna mix the background. There's not a whole lot of background just because my puppy is, you know, most of it's the puppy in the picture. I'm gonna grab this much white, just a, a good amount of white. And I'm going to start off with just a little bit of pink. I have a feeling it's going to turn pink a lot faster than I intend it to. Alright. I think I'm even going to grab blue now. Um, just so I can add the tiniest bit of blue to this, just to cut out, I want it a little bit more of like a soft, a soft pink. Okay, I like that, but I want a little bit more color not as white. All right, so now that we have our color, I'm actually gonna make two colors. So what I'm gonna do with the background is I'm gonna have like my base color and then I'm gonna kinda put some texture on it um because it's fun and why not um so i'm gonna take some of this pink and depending on what color of pink you have right now either let lighten it or darken it so i think i'm going to take some of this and lighten it i think i finally 
went too light or too dark on it. Not too dark, but. So you're gonna have slightly different tones of the same color. One's just gonna be slightly darker. All right. There you go. And a little trick with my palette knife is what I like to do is I will have two paper towels and I will open them up. You see that? I'll open it up, stick my little palette knife in there, and then I'll close it and I'll wiggle it out. And then all of a sudden I have a clean palette knife to use after I'm done or in the next section. Um, okay. I'm going to use my a uh, flat brush because a lot of these lines are flat. Um, I'm going to use a flat brush. I'm going to take my lightest color and I'm just going to take, I'm just going to go to the sides and just go around the edges. And I'm just going to continue to add texture as I go. So I'm not really using, I'm not using um, water because I kind of want to see the texture of the paper a little bit. And it's okay if you go over the line a little bit, fur is going to end up coming over that. So I myself am trying to stay um, a little bit on the either horizontal or vertical, but you can kind of do whatever you want. I'm just kind of keeping it rough. I'm going to come back with my darker pink and I think I need to make it a tiny bit darker eh, maybe not and add a little bit more texture by just going over it Kind of fun. It's a little bit of a textured background. Right, I'm going to rinse out my brush. Really the only thing, the, the fun thing about this background is that there's like not really a wrong way to do it. The only thing that I'm making sure of is that the line out, the outer rim, the outer edge of the puppy is pink, um, especially the top where the white's gonna go because I don't want my white puppy, the white part of my puppy to go against the white background. Um, so, 
because then you wouldn't be able to see like the outline, okay? So I am making sure of that. Okay. Um, I'm gonna grab my small round brush and I'm going to make these little guys pink. like really windy right here <laughs> right now and uh where we are and like i can hear all, all the things outside like rattling <laughs> it's like ah, don't blow away <laughs> whatever you are <laughs> okay so we got a little bit pink this one over here is has a little black spot on it so we can add that later oh uh, and actually there's technically a little paw right here and a little little guy right there. All right, so I think I'm pretty much done with the pink. We will see. All right, let's go ahead and make our brown. So I'm going to use my dark brown, which is my raw umber. I'm also going to get out my burnt sienna. If you do not have a burnt sienna, you can use um, red and yellow with your brown to create a nice warm tone orangey um, burnt sienna color. And then I'm also gonna get out a little bit of my yellow because the fur does have a little, a tiny bit of that kind of yellowish hue. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is with my filbert, I'm just gonna block in some of these dark areas with some water and a little bit of this brown. So it's a fairly, um, it's a fairly thin coat. It's almost more like watercolor than anything. And this is kind of where it pops out, right? And then there's a dark spot over here. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that when I'm putting in my other coat, of my lighter stuff, I don't want to lose my my drawing, and that's just an easy way of knowing that you you get to kind of keep that. All right, I think that's kind of all. Maybe there's a dark edge over here. The darkness right there. And this side of his face is dark, but we'll put that in when we get there. All right, I'm going to make this color. I'm gonna mix my raw umber with a little bit of burnt sienna, a tiny bit of yellow, like a little, little tiny bit, and a tiny bit of white. Go ahead and mix that together and see what you come up with. Um, I think 
I need more white as well as potentially some black to kind of gray it out just a tad bit. Okay, I need a little bit more of my raw umber. I'm going to add a tiny bit more yellow. I think this is a pretty good color. Okay, so I have this color. Um, this is a fairly good medium color. So I might add a little bit more white to it just to lighten it up ever so slightly. Um, so essentially in fur, and honestly in most paintings, you, you wanna do three coats, at least three coats. You have your base coat, which is kind of the ugly stage. You have your base colors. You're just blocking in your colors. And then you have your lights and your darks and then if you want to go an extra mile you have your details so i would say minimum of three layers um and then plus an extra layer depending on how much detail you want and those the, the last layer is like a bunch of layers kind of like layered on each other depending on what how much detail you're putting in so i have this i'm going to take some of this um and I'm going to take some white to it and lighten it up. And this is gonna be our, kind of our light color, our light fur. And then I'm gonna grab some of that, just a little bit of it, and I'm gonna add just a taste of the burnt sienna just to alter the color ever so slightly because fur is rarely one color. All right, so I have these three colors. I have my base coat, I have a light color, and then I have like an altering color, which technically um, you don't need, but it's good to have. I'm gonna rinse out my palette knife. There you go. And I'm going to grab my filbert, my small filbert, and we are going to cover pretty much the whole section of brown fur with this color. Now don't use too much, uh, don't use too much water we don't want it to be translucent. But what we can do is, if you do use a little bit of water, you'll be able to start putting in your little furs. And I'm just using this, I'm just doing this by kind of flicking my brush out. So you see how the end there is already Gonna go around my little white paw. I'm just brushing out. Maybe you have a couple long hairs that go out. I'm going to use some of this lighter color right here. Go in with a little bit of water. I'm 
we're just going to cover that all in brown. Before we move forward, I am going to get out some black so I can cover the eye because I really don't want to lose the eye placement. And I forgot to do that. We should have done that in the beginning. It's okay if it looks weird right now. It's gonna look a little bit cartoonish right now and that's okay. Technically you could keep it like that if you liked it. Okay, I'm gonna go back into my dark colors. Now what I'm using is a paper, so it's gonna, um, the paper soaks up my paint really, really fast. So I'm using a little bit of water to help it last a little bit longer and kind of move on the, on the page a little bit easier. Depending on your canvas and what you're using, you might not have to do that. I'm gonna use a little bit of dark brown in this area. go back into my medium tone and do this one over here and I'm just gonna brush off the side like that You do want to have a little bit of a brush off the side or else you're going to have like quite the um, line to work with. You see that line right there? I didn't like come over it fast enough. so that is your base coat for your brown now we're going to do some gray in here so I'm gonna grab some white a tiny bit of black of this we can kind of fill in with some white and I have 
have a slight bit of brown on my white, but that's okay. This will actually allow me to come in later with some pure white and um, put in some like highlights essentially. putting white over my paws. And of course, let's do the little nose. Most of this is black. I'm going to add a tiny bit of brown. And then we'll add some, some highlights in the end. kind of filling in his little nose. I'm going to use that same uh, kind of blackish brown to add the dark part on his little paw. And I'm going to take some of this pink and some brown I know that might seem like a weird combo, <laughs> but I'm just going to add a little bit of a um, shadow. To his little paws. All right, now we kind of have, we kind of get to have a little bit of fun here. I'm going to start from the back front. So I'm going to start with the outside of his ears first. I'm going to start with this lighter color. Um, and I'm actually going to go even lighter. And I'm just going to use, you can use a small round brush or you can use um, a filbert brush like I am and just turn it to the side. So I'm just, just 
coming forward. Just give a little bit of And then once you get to this area up here, his ear, you're going to go out because we're going to put a dark area right here. So I'm going to grab this dark brown that was right here. I'm going to start flicking out. I'm going to rinse out my brush and as I go up, I'm just going to flick some of this second color here. So we're gonna do this one now. We're gonna do some of this kind of uh, medium. If I have a dark medium and light brown, it's gonna be like the medium kind of color. And I'm just, I'm kind of blocking in this color. And I'm just gonna give this, this is short hair, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of texture. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of darker, right where the eyebrow is. I'm gonna come down. And whenever you go back to your lighter color from a darker color or a darker color to a lighter color, um, whichever way you go, you probably want to rinse out your brush a little bit. So you can just kind of add fur in different places. And at the very top, you can lighten it up a little bit. If you wanted to really do like a fur texture, I would get a, um, like a, Filbert or a 
like a brush that's kind of old um, and you can use just the tip of it here I'll kind of show you and you can come down you can come down and add little bits and it makes it look a little bit more like fur So like I said, it's all about how detailed you want to go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do this side. I'm going to put some lighter strokes in here. Maybe some medium tones and then this little eyebrow sticks out here in this like lighter color so make sure to get that and I'm going to come back here it's kind of like this darker color. And I'm going to move into like the darkest dark brown, maybe with a little bit of black in there. I'm going to brush it out a little bit. And brush it into his face a little bit. I'm also going to put some of this darkness over on this side. Gonna get this brighter color. And let's see. Brush it into that. And I'm gonna grab the lightest color so like more of like that whitish brown and some of that You can add a little bit more bold brush strokes, like up here at the top, and then coming out the top, coming out the bottom here.
I think he's cute. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of white and put a little bit of a um, highlight on his little nose. If you want to do this detailed, you could put a bunch of little dots. If not, then you can just go over it with a little bit of um, a little bit of that white. I think either way would look cute. And then I'm going to go back in to my, now that I'm kind of done with the stuff around the dog's eye. I'm going to come and finish. I'm going to come and finish the eye. So I have my um my small round brush. I'm just coming back in with my black. I'm going to put back in these darks right here. And then I'm going to come back around with a, um, a slightly gray and um, this is where you can add, add like a teeny, teeny, weeny bit of um, blue. ever so slight just so it's like a gray blue and you're just gonna put in a little water line there I'm gonna make it a little bit more thicker and then I'm also gonna use this to add my little Getting more white, a little reflection. So cute. I'm going to use the rest of this blue to cover up the white over here. Because this is all in the shadow, so not only is it not going to have, um, it's not going to have a, um, what am I trying to say? It's not going to have a reflection, but I think for the sake of just looking at it, I think I'm going to put one, maybe not as bright but just so it looks good the eyes are everything in painting animals so if you can get like fun fun eyes and like cute eyes and it's like it makes the whole painting look adorable <laughs> so I really like my eyes um, now we're just going to finish by putting um, 
putting our fur in, our white fur. So I'm gonna do this with a, um, a round brush because this round brush has a very nice point. It's a very nice point, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Get a little bit of water, but not too much, because I, I just enough to make it fluid, um, but not enough to make it uh, see-through. I'm just going to come down the edges and um, make make the edges of the brown line broken up so that it doesn't look like a line. Let me see if I can allow you to see this better. So as I'm doing this, I am using the tip of my brush and I'm just adding that to each side. If you need a little bit more paint, go get more paint and you can try to get my hand out of the way like that. So just look at the reference and see which way the fur is growing. And then I'm, because my white originally was not white, I also need to kind of just give some, um, give some texture and to the middle here. Now I'm gonna do the pause. And as you may know, no, the fur from uh, paws are just kind of everywhere and crazy. I add a, I added a slight little um, gray to the to the middle part here so that you can see um, 
the where like the section the middle the very very middle section is and you can even add like a little tiny line down the middle and then over here it's just a lot of kind of crazy So there's a little bit of a brown. Over here. I'm just going to put a little bit of this brown on the inside of each thing. Inside of each little finger. Toes. That's what they're called. And then obviously the outside, I'm just kind of creating little, little tiny fur. And fur is all different lengths, so some of it's going to be short, other other parts are going to be long. So That is pretty much that's pretty much it for this. Um, we're gonna do a little bit on the bottom to kind of give him a floor that he's sitting on. Uh, let's see. Maybe it's a girl. Maybe it's a girl this whole time. <laughs> I don't know, it can be a girl or a boy, however, depending on what your dog is. Um, all right, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna grab any old uh, brush and I'm going to get my white and I'm just going to give it a little bit of texture. And I'm going to stipple the bottom here. There's a little tiny bit of brown on my brush, but that doesn't bother me. I think that's okay. I'm going to get some pure white, so now I can kind of go back over it. And if it's pure white to start with, then you like you won't see it. And this is kind of that like blanket. I 
think I'm gonna go a little bit darker on the corners or the bottom. go one more time just my pure white all right and there we go there is our class. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna do one more thing. I added some white over here to the to the fur to make it pop a little bit more. Um, but I think I want to do a little bit of a wash. So I'm what um, if you've never done a wash before, um, I'm gonna grab some of this kind of um, brown color, and it's got a lot of white. On, uh, it's got a lot of water in it. And I'm just going to wash over um, some of this, mainly the white parts, so that it's not like, wow, you're white. <laughs> And then I'm gonna go over my black a little bit more here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm excited to see uh, yours and what you came up with. Um, please share it with me in the uh, in the artist community I have on Facebook. It's a free free Facebook group um, where you can share all of your paintings that you do with me, whether on Patreon or on YouTube. Doesn't matter. I love to see it. Um, let me go ahead and just copy and paste this. Um, I will. I also um, have traceables. Again, I have traceables in my Patreon. I also have exclusive classes. So if you're ever interested in learning a little bit more, um, I actually just uh, not. I haven't posted it yet, but on Friday, if you are interested in learning more about fur, um, I actually go in depth, um, and we paint this really pretty raccoon. So if you are interested in learning more about fur, this was like the basics, um, specifically made for beginners and kids. Um, but if you want to spend a, a little extra time, I think this was like a three hour class, three or four hour class. Um, so it was a lot of fun. If you're interested in things more like that, um, where we spend a little bit extra time, I do have a Patreon and you can learn more there. Otherwise, I will see you next week in our next class. I'm excited for it and we will see you then. Bye guys.